Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're gonna try to abuse Abuelo's Awakening in this blue-white artifact reanimator deck. The Awakening is a sorcery for X3 and white, returning an artifact or a non-aura enchantment card from our graveyard to the battlefield with X additional plus one counters on it, and it also turns it into a 1-1 spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types. So it's a 4-mana reanimation effect that can potentially bring back the likes of one with a multiverse, cityscape leveler, and portal to Phyrexia, which we're all pretty familiar with by now in standard and the fact that we can do so a turn sooner as opposed to repair and charge at five mana means we can potentially get on board that much faster and then awakening also makes for a nice mana sink in the late game as we can generate a very large spirit token and then the awakening also has excellent synergy with threefold thunder hulk a seven mana artifact creature it's a zero zero that enters with three plus one plus one counters on it and whenever it enters a battlefield or attacks we get to generate a number of one one known tokens equal to its power. So if we cast Thunder Hulk for 7 mana, it will generate 3 1 1s when it enters, and then we can later also sacrifice other artifacts to put plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Thunder Hulk. So we can maybe sacrifice the 3 gnome tokens, make it a 6 6, and then now when it attacks, it makes 6 tokens right away. So that can also snowball pretty quickly. But Thunder Hulk, when brought back with the Awakening, and let's say we cast one for x equals 2, then now our Thunder Hulk will enter with 5 plus 1 counters total, 2 from the Awakening, 3 from its own ability basically. So now we get a 5-5 five five that immediately makes 5 gnome tokens, so those plus 1 counters have a great synergy throughout. And then a Thunder Hulk also helps us go wide to protect our life total, because one of the problems with bringing back a Cityscape Leveler is that it's still only a single blocker, and if the opponent has a few small creatures in play, they can still attack past it to maybe deal the finishing blow. Now with Thunder Hulk, we can potentially make an army of gnome tokens that can get in the way and make it harder for those go wide decks to finish us off. And then it's also totally fine to hard cast at 7 mana and potentially reanimate. And then our other targets that we want to bring back from the graveyard is one with a multiverse to cast spells for free, cast spells of the top as well, can easily take over the game, especially once we start chaining them together. Then we've got Cityscape Leveler to destroy opposing a non-land permanence. And then we've got Portal to Phyrexia, making the opponent sacrifice three creatures when it enters. So even if we bring it back in creature form with the Abuelos Awakening, we'll still get that immediate value. Value, and then even though the opponent may be able to answer the portal, we'll still be pretty far ahead, and then we'll eventually find more ways to bring it back. And then besides the Awakening, we've got two copies of Reparent or Charge, which also makes a tap Power Stone token, which we can use to cast our artifacts or use some of our abilities, like the ones on Thunder Hulk, so that can also come in handy, and just gives us a bit more consistency besides just having the four Awakenings. Now, of course, we also need ways to put these expensive cards in the graveyard in the first place, so we can bring them back, and that's where we have four copies of Faithful Mending to draw two, discard two, and gain two life, and can also be flashed back for three mana. And then we've got Thirst for Knowledge to draw three cards, and then discard two unless we discard an artifact card, and of course that's often going to be the case, so this is also just a nice card draw spell. And then to give us some early interaction to survive aggro decks, we've got a full set of Get Lost to destroy creatures, enchantments, or planeswalkers, giving two map tokens in return. And then the full set of Temporary Lockdown, which can exile all non-land permanents with mana value 2 or less until Lockdown leaves the battlefield. So it can be a bit of a number with our own tokens from Thunderhulk, but for the most part this will only affect the opponent's stuff, including the map tokens that we might give them with Get Lost. So Get Lost and Lockdown also have great synergy, and this can be an important tool when facing decks like Monorad Aggro and some of the other small creature decks in the format that might be able to swarm us otherwise. So yeah, that's uh, basically our game plan. Our mana base has lots of blue-white dual lands, including two copies of Restless Anchorage as another mana sink that can also generate map tokens to synergize with Thunderhulk. And then a Field of Ruin can be an answer to opposing creature lands, and we get to run it now since we don't need to run Invoke Justice at 5 mana anymore, which was quadruple white, so the mana base is a lot easier to make work now that we can have more blue sources in there as well. And then the Channel lands offering a tiny bit more interaction as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, our hand's keepable, just missing a reanimation effect. But in the meantime, Mending can smooth out our draw. Up against Mono White, make that a Red White. So not sure yet how valuable Lockdown's going to be in the matchup. But uh, yeah, reinforcements, so uh, they are on the red white tokens deck most likely. So lockdown should be good. Do want to try and cast it before they can convoke something big. 
For now, scoundrels acceptable. And then a lockdown can also deal with a treasure token. So, what to discard? Probably one with a multiverse, and then maybe a land is fine. So if I can bring back one with a multiverse, I can cast Thunder Hulk from hand. And keeping the artifact is also better if we draw Thirst for Knowledge. So nice reset button for now. And we've got another one in hand. Next turn we can flash back Faithful Mending as well. Bone's gonna pass. Uh, yeah, there's a Thirst for Knowledge. Not opposed to main phasing it in case we draw tap lands, but then again we've got plenty of lands that enter untapped, so it's not a huge concern. So I'll keep the opponent guessing, can maybe animate the anchorage and block with it. If our opponent flashed in a creature or played something with haste. Alright, Recruiter, just making a pair of knights, that's acceptable. And let's Thirst. Discard Portal. And then now, probably going for Mending and Thirst for Knowledge. Can Thirst for Knowledge first. Don't think I need to lock down the Knights, even though they might hit pretty hard with the Recruiter next turn. I should still kind of work towards my game plan. We're also not too far from casting Thunderhulk. So yeah, let's just give it another turn. Right, frontliners, so they're definitely setting up a recruiter here. And we might take quite a hit. Demolition, alright, that's uh, adding up now. So... I could also thirst for knowledge and maybe hit a get lost that we can still cast. No get lost. So that happens. And then now recruiter giving the team plus one power and haste. Yep. Well, lockdown is still looking good, but we do need to survive this attack. So we'll gain two. And there's the Awakening, so what to discard here, maybe a land and a Thunderhulk. And then Awakening, get back one with a Multiverse, cast one with a Multiverse, cast maybe a Lockdown instead of Portal to Phyrexia at this point. I guess I can just discard a land. So at 6, and our opponent will get to keep Recruiter if we cast Lockdown. So yeah, we could still be in a bit of trouble. At least Awakening makes it so we actually have a creature on defense. So I could cast this for X equals 2, or I could maybe cast it for X equals 0 on the off chance that there's a Get Lost on top of my deck I can cast for 2 mana. Given that we haven't seen any Get Losts, Maybe not a horrible idea, although if I cast it for X equals 2, then we would have a 3-3 that naturally lines up all against the Recruiter. So I think it's still worth it. Could have also cast it for X equals 1, so I don't play a land over the top of my deck yet with one with a multiverse to get more value. So we would have been able to play a land, but then our creature would have been smaller. And then now lockdown over portal, interestingly enough. Alright, so we're at 6, and we could potentially die here. I'm okay trading, since we have another multiverse in play. For now a battle mouse. Frontliner. Enable Celebration, and a Scoundrel. So that's adding up. Battle Mouse triggers. So if I block the Scoundrel, we take 5 plus 1 more from the Wicked Roll, so we actually die. 
So I have to block Frontliner and then fall to one. It's a pretty sneaky attack from our opponents. So we fall to one. And now it's time to stabilize. So I could play Ottawara off the top to get a bit of value. Then we're gonna wanna cast Portal to Phyrexia for free. And then we can still flashback mending a bunch. Can set for two mana. Can maybe start there. Find another one with a multiverse I can cast first. And I prefer Portal over Thunderhulk. And then we can still gain more life with Mending at instant speed. Or maybe block with Anchorage. Alright, so we're still putting up a fight here. Bunnycorn's fine. And at this point we can ditch our lanes. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Super close Nailbiter here against the red-white tokens. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And our hands got some interaction. What we're missing is both a discard outlet and a reanimation spell. So this one's borderline, but I'll give it a shot. Ideally we find our card draw first, which will naturally find our reanimation effect. And then get lost as good synergy with lockdown as we'll be able to maybe clean up those map tokens. Put in green-white, so could be enchantments. Now make that bend. And IV points towards the poison deck. I'll wait on get lost since lockdown cleans up IV quite nicely. And maybe our opponent will play a rot priest or some other creatures first. If they go for research, we can get lost. Maybe bait out a protection spell. And Laurent's escape. Alright, so they will get to connect here, draw a card. And that's perfect, so now we can clean everything up with a lockdown. And then it's still waiting for a discard outlet for Thunderhulk. So, play a land and pass, I guess. Just get up to 7 mana to hardcast it. Opponent found Skrelv. Their hand is probably full of protection effects now. And yeah, we can't really punish them right now, as our hand's pretty clunky as well. Although, it only takes one card draw effect to maybe enable everything. And a portal, another dud. So, we're giving the opponents a bit too much time now. Down to 11. A level earth a draw. Alright, well, we don't have many more of those in the deck, I guess. At least Portal gets around something like a Lauren's Escape, Get Lost does not. Now I can actually discard to hand size, which might be the way to go here. Discarding one with a multiverse. So I can immediately cast Portal to Phyrexia. And next turn set it up. There's Rot Priest in response. I'm gonna attempt to Get Lost. And then I could also Get Lost the Audacity. Although our opponent would still draw off of that, but at least if they have a Lawrence escape, they don't get to, you know, keep both, since escape only goes for artifacts and creatures. So let's try and get around that. I guess if we're targeting the enchantments, Rod Priest doesn't care about it, so I could await it. Yeah, 
in case they top decked something relevant here. All right, time for Awakening. And then immediately cast Portal to Phyrexia to stabilize. Another Audacity. They keep on top. And that resolves. Play our free land. And cast our free portal. Opponent does have a slip out the back to save the Rod Priest. So we're at 5 poison. Now I'm regretting casting this for x equals 1, since I could have maybe kept up get lost. So we'll see if they can do 5 more poison here. Homestead Courage. Alright, so I'm gonna be forced to chum block the Rod Priest, it seems. And they can flashback. Homestead Courage. So yeah, I have to chump here. Otherwise, they can uh, flash it back second main and apply to more poison. So it can get back a Virtuoso. But that's not going to be good enough. So let's go for Awakening. And land on top. And then now we can cast a free leveler, I want to say. Take out the Rod Priest. And this only cares about spells and not abilities. That works. Alright, and then I could get Lost Ivy. I guess that's probably fine now. Alright, so our opponent doesn't have any creatures in play. But if they find another Rod Priest, they could maybe go off. For now, Virtuoso, that's fine. Opponent goes exploring, finding another Virtuoso on top. They can put an Audacity on it, make it pretty big, but a leveler does get a chance to attack here. So they would need another Lorlan's Escape to make it indestructible. And we get to bring back... Does Ivy do anything for me? Maybe I prefer Skrelv at this point. Another one with the multiverse, and another portal, so that gets around another Loran's escape. And our opponent explodes, a very close one here against the banned poison, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a keepable hand. We're missing our reanimation spell, but we've got a lot of card draw to try and find it and some good interaction early on. The initiate is potentially an answer to the lockdown, but of course we can exile it with lockdown itself. If something like Thalia were to show up, that would make all our cards more expensive. For now, Officer, and an attack for one. Probably gonna have to Mending to keep hitting our land drops so we can lock down next turn. Opponent attacks and trains. And does nothing. Alright, did not hit our land drop. So, one with a multiverse goes to the graveyard alongside a leveler, I want to say. And we did find a land now, so yeah, let's go for lockdown. 
possible our opponent can flash in reinforcements end of turn. Or maybe they were just holding a bunch of removal. Although they didn't have a get lost, which could have answered lockdown. For now, Adlin without an immediate token. And we could thirst to try and hit our land drop. I'm also just fine casting the get loss on Adlin. And we'll uh, put some stops here to make sure to answer Adlin before they get a chance to attack. Officer is fine. And a specialist won't be able to get anything back. They just wanted to grow Adlin's power before attacking. Alright, land is good. So, still one land away from repair and recharge. But we can either thirst for knowledge or flashback mending, or if we really have to, get lost. But I would prefer to draw cards to hit our land drop for repair and recharge. So I'll pass it back for now. Adversary can pump the team. That's still manageable. Although we don't have a portal to Phyrexia in the graveyard, which is what we would prefer here to kind of stabilize. So it takes seven. Unless we want to get lost adversary, then we only take five. And that buys us more time. I think I'm okay taking seven. And then Faithful Mending gains me a bit of life back. I don't really mind discarding some of these artifacts. And I guess our plan would be get back one with a multiverse, and then I can cast a leveler for free. So that being the case, I could also thirst for knowledge, which digs a little bit deeper towards our fifth land, and then we only have to discard one artifact. So we'll stick to that plan. And we found a portal on top of the deck, even better. Clean things up nicely. Still at a relatively healthy life total against Mono White, and yeah, our opponent won't be able to overpower this. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's keepable. We've got our discard outlet, reanimation spell, something to reanimate. Endanic is actually pretty effective graveyard hate in this matchup, so we'll need to find an answer to it first. But we do have both Get Lost and Lockdown, which can get rid of it. Opponent does have turn 3 Rafine, so they're off to a nice start. Opponent on Esper Legends. So finding a Lockdown or Get lost early is important, and then eventually Portal to Phyrexia can be a nice way to stabilize. So, what to discard? I guess we want to keep one artifact in hand for Thirst for Knowledge. So I can just go land and maybe Thunder Hulk. We will be taking quite the hit here. Opponent discarding Shieldred, so they might have another one in hand. Alright, opponent passes. Possible they're sitting on a counter spell, or maybe a Tide Binder, which could potentially counter a, a Portal to Phyrexia's ability. Alright, we found a Get Lost that answers Denik. And uh, can play a tapped coast since we can't do anything else. Possible we see Wandering Emperor end of turn. Opponent does nothing. Well, it is very much possible our opponent has another Denik in hand, so if I go for a Get Lost, they'll just play another Denik, so I could just wait until end of turn. Of course, means taking a bit more damage as well. So, close call. Next turn I would be repairing 
a leveler, which doesn't even answer the opponent's flyer right away since we don't get to cast trigger. So, I don't think I can afford to play around a second Denik since we're just gonna fall too low. So let's just take it out now. So we're still at 12. And a Deep Cavern Bant's gonna have a look. Luckily we have both Awakening and Repair and Recharge. Our opponent takes the Repair and Recharge. Makes sense. And the Wedding Announcements will make a token. Alright, now that we found Portal to Phyrexia, I'm kind of tempted to wait another turn. So we can bring that back instead of you know, a leveler which doesn't do anything the turn we play it, or a Thunderhulk which doesn't help against the flying creatures. And then I could main phase, thirst for knowledge, discard portal, or we can keep everything at instant speed, since if I draw get lost I would be able to cast it at instant speed. So let's pass. Now of course another Denik could mess things up, if our opponent plays another creature, portal's not going to be as effective. Alright. That I don't mind. Go for the throw, it doesn't seem all that great in the matchup, so it goes to the graveyard. Now, for points, got a counter spell. As we said, Tide Binder also counters our portal's trigger. Those are all problem cards. So I'm still not keeping my hopes up here, as another shield road goes to the graveyard. And announcement triggers. Alright, we can discard portal, still cast mending just to gain some life. And then discard mending, discard a land. Opponent does have the mana for a tight binder. So, yeah, not much we can do about it, I guess. Just hope they don't have it. Opponent with an air tie to counter it instead, that also works. And then we should be dead on the way back. Alright, yes. Early pressure backed up by counter spells is a pretty good recipe to beat our strategy. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems decent, just missing our reanimation effect to bring back Portal. But we've got some good early interaction. Up against green-white enchantments, so the lockdown should be effective. Don't expect any real graveyard interaction. So I'm gonna prioritize mending over a get lost on two. But we might want to lock down, or we could wait another turn. Of course, the risk of not casting lockdown is that our opponent's got some 4-mana enchantment that they get to play right away. So one portal goes. Question is, do I discard a second portal? I guess that's okay. Could also keep it in case we draw Thirst for Knowledge. And for now, just discard Mending, which we're happy to flash back as well. Yeah, close call. Could be convinced to just flash back Mending. If we lock down, we still have a Get Lost in hand for next turn. So maybe that bridges the gap nicely if we find our Repair and Recharge at 5 mana. Answer the board, next turn, draw Discard, and then turn after. We can uh, bring back Portal and stabilize. Yeah, I think that's safer. Because... 
between naturalist and visitor, her opponent can do a lot of damage. And there's a few 3 and 4 mana cards that Lockdown can't answer anyway. Kami would have been nice to exile. Now, I could main phase Mending, or we can just keep up Mending and get lost since we've got plenty of untapped lands. Can definitely take a couple attacks here. Yeah, nah. Okay. That might be worth answering. Ideally with a portal to Phyrexia. Opponent does not attack, maybe afraid of a Wandering Emperor, so... Keeping a mana paid off. Probably no need to discard another portal. Alright, there's our Awakening, so... X equals 1. At least deal with our two creatures for now. And then if they can't take out Portal with a Halsification, we'll be able to reanimate their creatures. Alright, Halsification or Portal. Now, interestingly enough, we've got a Get Lost, which can destroy enchantments. And then we'll get kind of the normal version of Portal back. No point in destroying it in upkeep, because it only triggers beginning of upkeep, so we would kind of lose out on that value. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty funny interaction. So for now, we can flash back Mending. Can maybe start there. And then, uh, once the correct timing to get lost, I guess we'll let the opponent untap. See if they play another creature. They do. Although I guess they can copy the trigger with Weaver if they'd like. And draw an extra card. That's acceptable. Just wait for them to commit another creature into our instant speed portal to Phyrexia. Seems like they don't have it. And our opponent explodes. Nice. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keepable Hand. Missing one of our six reanimation effects. But we've got some early interaction, some card draw. So hopefully we'll find those in time. Opponent Mono Black so far. Might have to watch out for Graveyard Hate in the form of Graveyard Trespasser. For now, a Forebear. Okay. Don't think we need to get lost, or do we? It is probably my best opportunity to do so in the foreseeable future, so yeah, let's just go for it. And then Lockdown can also deal with the map tokens. But I probably want to thirst for knowledge first. Henrika, that's fine. Can draw them a card. So we actually want to discard one with a multiverse plus something else. So we can bring it back with Awakening next turn and then cast Leveler for free. That seems good. Now I can imagine our opponent will have an answer to our enchantment. But at least we got a Leveler in play. And then now Lockdown will deal with all the opponent's artifact tokens. The mana value on one with the multiverse is still 8, so it doesn't get exiled by our own lockdown. So let's see. 5 mana. They could maybe have a cheap removal spell for the 1-1, one, one, and then another sacrifice effect to deal with leveler. It's going to be a march for 1, for starters. And a hero's downfall, haven't seen that one in a while. Okay, opponent managed to deal with our threats. So don't really feel the need to cast a Lockdown right now. Let's just pass and Thirst for Knowledge. Trespasser, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. It's gonna clean up our graveyards. Let's see if they prioritize one with a Multiverse or a Leveler. Goes for Leveler. 
involved sleeper. Gets exiled by a lockdown. Alright, so we need some good draws. Sleeper levels up. And those are not the draws we were hoping for. So step one, probably cast a lockdown. And then I can still thirst at instant speed in the opponent's turn. And then we need to both hit something big to reanimate, as well as the reanimation spell. So one with the multiverse is gone. Now, of course, we are getting close to hard casting some of those curve toppers as well. So we might want to just hold them in hand instead of discarding. All right, well, we hit the jackpot here. So, discard one with a multiverse and a land. And then we can repair and recharge it back. And then, how about another one? And cast my free leveler. Which can destroy the forebear. It's fine. Could have held on to an untapped plan instead of Anchorage. And then Get Lost might have been an option, but it's not like we can get lost to Trespasser and pay the ward. So yeah, I'm liking my chances now. Even if they deal with Leveler, with double one with a multiverse and Mending coming up, we're gonna see a ton of new cards. Another hero's downfall. And Trespasser's gonna gobble it up. Okay, so Awakening doesn't have anything too exciting to bring back here. So I think we start with a 2-mana Mending. And then another one with a Multiverse we can cast for free. And at this point we probably don't need Awakening, we can just hard cast some of our Curve Toppers. Play a land. Another mending, maybe flashback mending first. Another awakening on top. I think we flashback once again. And then Thunder Hulk we can cast for free. And uh, I'll just cast another one from hand, I guess. Okay, we're on the board. Next turn we can maybe sack some gnomes to the Thunderhawk's ability to grow it. If our opponent is holding go for the throat, it's not going to be very effective in this matchup. But we've already seen Hero's Downfall and March as other answers. For now, another Trespasser. But we've successfully pivoted into our late game, where we don't really need the graveyard anymore. So that's one of the advantages of just having some expensive cards we can hard cast. Play our land. Another Thunder Hulk for free. And then we could thirst for knowledge, but I also don't mind just using the ability bunch here. And just attack all out. And then leaving one activation in case they double block, we can trade. The Power Stone also coming in handy, helping us activate Thunderhulk. And can also help cast some of our more expensive artifacts. Okay, so I'll just sacrifice here instead.
And I don't really feel the need to do anything else here. Another hero's downfall deals with Thunderhulk. We've got 10 one ones on defense. And her opponent explodes, so they definitely put up a fight. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand is missing a reanimation effect, as well as some cheap interaction. So, if we're up against a very aggressive deck, this may be too slow. Against mid-range or control, this could be good enough. Alright, so we did not see turn 1 mountain, that's good. Although, if we're up against the domain deck, they could certainly still overpower us in the late game. Mending's not bad. Probably want to hang on to the artifact to discard to Thirst for Knowledge and just discard one with a multiverse. Possible our opponent's just on Jund. So that can go, and we found our Awakening, so we can potentially bring back one with a multiverse and then cast a free portal right away. Opponent still being patient. So it's not the best window to cast a portal to Phyrexia if there's no creature to take out. So I think I'm gonna wait. And then we can still flashback Mending. If we had another one with a multiverse in hand, it would be a different story, because then we can at least have that enchantment on the battlefield. That's harder to answer. Possible our opponent's hand is just all removal. But yeah, as long as we keep hitting our land drops, we're also kind of working towards our own late game. Probably no need to lock down. I'll just wait another turn to cast the first awakening. Now we can cast a Leveler for free, potentially, instead of a Portal to Phyrexia. Not gonna attempt to block with Anchorage, don't think that's gonna work out. Can also eventually find a Field of Ruin to answer the Mirex. Alright, we'll give this a try. X equals 2. Then mending on top. Still prefer casting a free leveler, I think. And then if they answer leveler, we can bring it back with portal after getting back one with a multiverse. Assuming it doesn't get exiled. And lockdown can clean up all these tokens as well. Carnosaur takes out one with a multiverse. It's possible they're on a Carnosaur combo deck that can just copy Carnosaur a bunch with Discover and set up lethal in one turn. For now an invasion. Getting double planes. So I'm not exactly sure where this is going. But uh, yeah, I guess we can Awakening again. Could cast Mending first, and then Awakening for one will suffice. Was hoping to hit another one with a Multiverse. There might be one on top of the deck. So let's see. Discard two lanes. And then I could start by attacking, could just Awakening without playing land, so I can maybe play a land off the top. And 
and a free portal. Okay. And there's another one with a multiverse coming up. So to answer this one, next turn I'll be able to potentially awakening back one with a multiverse and then cast another one for free. Not sure if taking out Invasion of Zendikar was necessary. Also possible they can exile my board with uh, Sunfall here after getting double planes. And then our awakening is not going to work out. But we're close to just hard casting this. Yep, there it is. Yeah, we've got 8 mana, so we can hard cast one with a multiverse. Portal can get back Carnosaur. Which I guess would get rid of our one with a multiverse. Hadn't thought about that. So I could have cast Faithful Mending a response. We hit a lockdown. Yeah, I could have cast Mending a response to at least draw one with the multiverse to set it up next turn. We'll see how this plays out, I guess. And then... Can still flash back Mending, or we can get a portal in play with the Awakening. That might be the window to attack with Anchorage as well. Start with Flashback Mending. Right, Thunderhulk's not bad. So maybe discard Thunderhulk with a plan of Awakening to get it back. Or I can just hard cast it. I think I prefer that. Lockdown can go. And a land can go. And then from the looks of it... Don't think they're likely to have two mana instant speed removal that answers Anchorage. Could also keep up Soaring City to be fair, which is maybe better. Now, of course, discarding Thunderhulk means I could have gotten it back with Portal to Phyrexia. So there was still kind of a reason to uh, discard the creature here. For now, up the Beanstalk. And a Sunfall. So, Portal wouldn't be getting back Carnosaur. Bouncing it doesn't seem like a great idea. But now it can cast Thunderhulk. So it does seem like they're kind of the more traditional domain deck after all. For now, Topiary Stomper, maybe getting the blue mana. Yep, there's Islands, so now one mana, Leyline Binding, could be an option too. Yeah, I guess I don't mind sacking a token here. Might see them binding the Thunderhulk in response. Right, never mind, Carnosaur dealing three. But now we can bring back either Carnosaur or Thunderhulk with a portal to Phyrexia. So opponent's going to binding the portal as well. Okay. They mapped it all out. So now we can just hard cast portal or get lost to two-mana answer to the binding. Can also get it back. But, uh... Yeah, I guess if I cast the Awakening, we can go for a large Thunderhulk. Hoping they don't have another Sunfall. They've already cast two of them. And then get lost on binding can maybe clean things up next turn as well. Don't hate that idea. So just go for X equals 5. Make a massive Thunderhulk. And pass it back. So if they don't have Sunfall and just hard cast an Atraxa here, we can easily win the game. Alright, opponent had a third Sunfall, so now we're in a bit of trouble. Losing Thunderhulk. Opponent's got some massive Incubator tokens. And another Stomper. So I can just cast Thunderhulk. And then that keeps up Get Lost for Portal. Can now trump the Incubator. And sack to the Thunderhulk as well. Archangel of Wrath. Can take out Thunderhulk. And that happens. 
So they are currently tapped out of white mana. And just a stomper attacking. Okay, I guess uh, we can get lost to binding now. If our opponent's not going to activate the incubator, we may as well. And then we'll get back Thunder Hulk with a portal to Phyrexia. Could also go for the opponent's Trumpeting Carnosaur, for instance. Yeah, Carnosaur is somewhat tempting, just because we might hit another lockdown to answer all the tokens. I guess our tokens would also get exiled. But better doing it before getting back another Thunder Hulk. Getting back Thunder Hulk now puts a few more threats in play. Let's get the Carnosaur. And then I can cast another portal if I'd like. Get lost hits up the beanstalk. And then I could attack with the 1-1s one if our opponent blocks with their larger incubator. We can answer it. Thirst for knowledge the draw. I guess I should leave one gnome back so we don't just take a huge hit of the incubator if they decide to attack me back. Opponent just takes it. Yeah, I don't think I should cast another portal here. I could main phase thirst and maybe find something useful. Discard portal and then repair and recharge could bring it back. Still haven't found another one with a multiverse. But I guess that's fine. Lockdown also an option. So if I lock down now, don't have to worry about the incubator. But I can answer the incubator next turn with another portal. Yeah, now that there's enough creatures in circulation, I don't mind getting back portal. Is it finally time for Natraxa? If her opponent casts a tally and hits my one with the multiverse, I'm gonna be pretty sad. Alright, Incubator's gonna get busy. So trumping with the Carnosaur to bring it back. It's not a terrible idea if they go for it here. Another Archangel. Hits me and the 1-1. One, one. So right now we've got a Thunder Hulk to get back. And the opponent's Archangel. So don't mind jumping. It's pretty important that we keep another portal as an answer to an Atraxa. Poseju is relevant interaction. Currently mana short of channeling it. So we'll go for Carnosaur and Thunder Hulk. Hitting Awakening, which we could also put in hand, or I can uh, cast it and get Portal back. Although it's going to be in creature form. Draw City Skip Leveler. Alright, so we're basically all in, hoping they don't have the final Sunfall here. Could also attack with Anchorage. Yeah, not sure how much Leveler really adds to the equation. Might want to keep that as a leftover for, let's say, Notraxa. Now we've got a bunch of artifacts we can sack to the Thunder Hulk as well. Well, there's a lot of back and forth here. It's 
still waiting for Atraxa to show up. They've only cast the one Leyline Binding so far, so they might have more in hand. And then we know about Buseju as well. The game probably would have looked a bit different had we drawn into that one with a multiverse earlier. Although it's not so much that we're limited by the amount of mana we have, it's more that we're kind of uh, limited by the opponent's interaction and don't really want to play Portal when there's no creatures to take out. Carnosaur triggers, hits up the Beanstalk. Opponent goes exploring, so four mana left. So we don't need to worry about Sunfall this turn. So the question is, can we deal 14 damage? Poseidio answers Thunderhulk, so we don't necessarily want to go all in. Alright, Jace, it's kind of a card to beat the mirror match. Could be pretty effective here. They still have an incubator they can jump with. Now they can only cast one Jace, it's not like we're gonna get double Jaced out of nowhere. Alright, so... Could cast a Thirst. Just have to be a little bit careful. Alright, so what does Lockdown do for me? Probably hurts me more than the opponent at this point. I can sack a map token and maybe a Power Stone, which might prompt the Boseju on Thunderhulk. And then we're getting triple portal trigger here. So no creatures in my graveyard. Don't necessarily want to search up a land with Stompers, since then Jace is going to be a bigger concern. And I guess we don't have any basics left anyway. Okay, so let's say we cast Leveler to clear Carnosaur. Then they have to decide between jumping with Incubator or channeling Boseju. Opponent goes for Leyline Binding, so they can still channel Busage or jump with Incubator. Exile Carnosaur. So I'm not going to be able to close out the game right now. Which is fine, Jace mills for 15, and then hopefully we get them in two turns. Goes for Busage. Could sacrifice Leveler now, so it's in the graveyard instead of potentially getting exiled by another Sunfall. But then again, we also want the extra threats in place. Our opponent's going to take six. Yeah, we could just let this happen. And then what does happen if they Sunfall? Then I still have a Thunderhulk to get back. And that's it. I guess there's a Carnosaur as well. So there's still some leftovers. And then we also have an Anchorage that, that can get busy. And there's Atraxa, that's acceptable. If the Atraxa and then Sunfall afterwards, then they're still vulnerable to, I guess, just Anchorage. No other haste creatures. So that's where sacking a leveler could have paid off. And yeah, opponent hit the last Sunfall, but they still need double white to cast it, and their white sources enter tapped. Possible they mistapped by using double planes here. 
But yeah, this is the type of game where both players could have made a million different decisions along the way. If leveler attacks, we get to destroy a Traxa and win the game, but we could also cast Portal to clean things up. And our opponent finally explodes. All right. So yeah, ended up being a very long and grindy game against the five color domain deck. And uh, yeah, in general, it's going to be a close matchup because we can see that their late game also doesn't mess around. And we could see that we're packing the Mirror Breaker and Jace, which can be very helpful at closing out games where both players draw a ton of cards. Now, we didn't get to see the matchup against Monorad Aggro, which I was kind of surprised by. And that matchup is probably going to come down to who's on the play or draw and whether or not we find our temporary lockdown early to kind of stabilize the board. And then, of course, how quickly we can turn the corner with our reanimation effects. So that one probably still favors Monorads, I would have to guess. But it's certainly a winnable matchup and we can also adapt our sideboard to be even better against it by including more early life gain and blockers. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.